Testing of detector sensitivity is required in NFPA 72. In the 2013 edition, it is covered in section 14.4.4.3. The sensitivity should be checked within one year of installation. It should then be checked every alternate year unless it complies with 14.4.4.3.3 in that if the second calibration is correct or ha it has remained in its marked sensitivity range, the length of time between calibration tests can be extended to five years. If the extension is in place, any nuisance alarms need to be documented. If there is an increase in nuisance alarms over the previous year, another calibration test shall be performed. Any of the following methods can be used for checking the sensitivity of the smoke detectors. A calibrated test method, the manufacturer's calibrated sensitivity test instrument, listed control equipment arranged for the purpose, smoke detector fire alarm control unit arrangement whereby the detector causes a signal at the fire alarm control unit when its sensitivity is outside of its listed sensitivity range. Other calibrated sensitivity test methods approved by the authority having jurisdiction. When a detector is found to be outside of its listed sensitivity or calibrated range, the detector shall be cleaned, recalibrated, or replaced. Smoke detectors that have a field adjustable sensitivity can be permitted to be adjusted within that listed and marked sensitivity range, cleaned, recalibrated, or replaced. The detector sensitivity shall not be tested or measured using any device that administers an unmeasured concentration of smoke or other aerosol into the detector or smoke alarm. When working on a Potter signal addressable fire alarm system, to test the sensitivity, we recommend using the fire alarm control unit. In this video, we'll focus on how the PFC addressable fire alarm panels test the sensitivity of the detectors. Testing sensitivity determines whether the detector will alarm at the correct smoke obscuration. Obscuration is an amount of smoke per foot. For example, a national testing facility requires all smoke detectors to alarm at 4% per foot obscuration. 4% per foot is visible smoke in a room. 1% per foot obscuration is particles in the air, but there's no visible smoke. You should be able to smell the smoke at 1% obscuration. Dirt and dust are the main concern when testing sensitivity as these are the things that can cause the detector to become out of its calibrated range. Panels, including the Potter PFC addressable panels, have built-in drift compensation for their smoke detectors. Taking a moment to look at drift compensation on the PFC addressable fire alarm panels, this can best be demonstrated by graphing the obscuration by the detector values. When the sensitivity is checked by the panel, the detector reports an analog value that is deciphered by the panel to a certain sensitivity. The panel then determines whether that sensitivity is normal, in drift alert, a dirty detector, or an alarm condition. The PSA and the PSHA have adjustable sensitivity in the field. They can be set anywhere from 1.1% per foot obscuration to a maximum of 3.5% per foot. In order to be a listed detector with a national testing agency, the detector must alarm prior to reaching 4% per foot obscuration, and it must also not alarm before it reaches 0.5% per foot obscuration. When the fire panel initializes, it records a 0% per foot obscuration or a normal value for the smoke detector, as you can see here. When a line is drawn between that initial setting and the maximum setting, the panel can then determine the calibration curve and can then calculate an alarm threshold value for any valid sensitivity setting. The panel can also determine the drift alert range as well as the dirty detector trouble range for that particular sensitivity setting. As the detector gets dirty, the clear air value will increase and the panel will compensate for that or adjust the alarm threshold value accordingly. As drift compensation progresses, the first stage will be drift alert, in which the PFC addressable fire alarm control panel will send an alert email to those receiving the treble emails indicating that the detector is in a drift alert stage. At this point, there is no trouble on the fire alarm control panel. The next stage is the dirty detector trouble. At this point, the detector will be in trouble at the fire alarm control panel and it can no longer compensate for the level of dirt. In other words, the detector can no longer successfully compensate for dirt such that it alarms within 4% obscuration. At this point, the detector needs to be cleaned or replaced. When a detector connected to the PFC addressable fire alarm control panel is in a drift alert phase, an email address programmed to receive trouble emails in the programming software will receive a drift alert email. 
as you can see here. The panel will remain in a normal condition. When a detector connected to the PFC addressable fire alarm panels has reached the dirty detector limit, the fire alarm control panel will be in trouble, as seen here, and a status email will be sent to any email address programmed in the programming software to receive trouble emails. In addition, if you were to view the sensitivity report when the detector has sent you a drift email, you would see that the detector is now in drift alert and it now says alert. It still complies with NFPA 72, but is close to causing a dirty detector trouble. Also, when you get the dirty detector trouble at the fire alarm control panel, if you were to view a sensitivity report, you would see that it no longer shows a drift percentage and it no longer complies with NFPA 72 please refer to software video 5 email reporting to program an email address to receive trouble emails. There are several methods for checking the sensitivity of the detectors. You can either do it through the panel's keypad, through the programming software, or through the built-in email capabilities of the PFC addressable fire alarm control panels. We will start by looking at how to check the sensitivity through the panel's keypad. Through the keypad, you can check the sensitivity by point. To check the sensitivity by point, access the main menu by selecting Enter, then select number 5 system tools. Enter your user code, I'm entering the default 1111, and then select number 1 from the tools menu, SLC tools. From here select SLC pinpoint number 1, and then enter the address of the device that you'd like to check the sensitivity on. In this case I'm going to select number 20, where I have a photo detector installed. And here I can see the address, that it is a photo. I can see that it is currently set for day sensitivity. The current condition is zero, so it doesn't see anything currently, and there's been no peak value seen. You can see the day and night alarm threshold, so right now we'd be going by 3.5% obscuration. There's currently no drift, or the detector is not dirty. As soon as that drift matches the max, which is 1.8% here, the detector would be in a dirty detector trouble. So when the drift is close to 1.8, you would want to consider cleaning this detector prior to it causing a dirty detector trouble. You can use the up and down arrows to scroll through the rest of the detectors on your SLC circuit to check their sensitivity. To check the sensitivity of all the detectors at one time, you can use the programming software. Connect your laptop computer to the fire alarm control panel, and through the programming software, select Upload Detector Status. When you click on Upload Detector Status, it'll bring up the Transfers window. You can give the file a name. I'm using the default username and password of Potter Potter, but you'll want to enter your username and password. And then you're going to either enter the IP address or the panel's name and select OK. At this point in your transfers window you should see at the top the type is status and the status is complete. Double click on that file and that will open up your detector sensitivity report. You can see I have four detectors. They'll either be photo heats, heats, or photo detectors. You can see that the sensor name that you've assigned to them and their current condition. Current condition will either be their current obscuration or their current temperature if they are a heat detector. Peak value is the highest reading of obscuration or temperature since the system was last powered up. You can see the day-night sensitivity. They are currently 3.5%. They are the same because I do not have day-night sensitivity enabled. We have the thermal alarm level, which is the temperature at which the heat detectors will go into alarm. The photo heat will always be 135 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you see the drift percentage, and this is the amount that the smoke detector has adjusted or drifted for dirty chamber conditions or how dirty is the detector. And you can see one detector that I have is clean at 0% and one is slightly dirty, 0.8%. It will cause a dirty detector trouble when it reaches the drift limit. The drift limit is how far the detector is allowed to adjust and still be within UL and NFPA 72 requirements. The drift limit is one half the most sensitive day or night sensitivity setting. When the drift percentage reaches the drift limit amount, the detector goes into a dirty detector trouble at the fire alarm control panel. You can see they are both not in drift alert or they are okay. In drift alert, an email is sent to those programmed to receive trouble emails through the programming software when the detector reaches approximately 75% of the drift limit. The panel does remain in a normal condition when you are in a drift alert stage. And these smoke detectors both comply with NFPA 72. This indicates that they are operating according to its listed sensitivity and they meet NFPA 72 requirements.
If the detector has reached the drift limit, this will say no. At this point, you could print this to a printer. You could export this to Excel or Word and create a nice sensitivity report to submit with your annual inspection. When you select to send it to a printer, it will show you a print preview of your sensitivity report. And here you can also send this to Excel or Word, again creating a nice report for your detector sensitivity test for your annual inspection. The final way to conduct a sensitivity test and generate a sensitivity report is through email. The panel will need to be connected to a network with internet access to allow emails to be sent. Sensitivity reports are attached in the emails as Excel and text files. The file sizes are very small so as not to cause network issues. The emails can be scheduled to be sent to several different email accounts and up to eight different schedules can be programmed. For example, you could have one email recipient receive the sensitivity report weekly and another email address receive the sensitivity report monthly. You can also set up an email address such that that email account can email the fire alarm control panel and request a sensitivity report from the panel on demand, which means that at any time they could do a sensitivity report at the fire alarm control panel simply by sending an email to the panel and requesting a sensitivity report. Please refer to the email reporting and email reminder training videos for details on programming these emails. As you can see here, I have the sensitivity report and the history report coming to me every morning at 8 o'clock. They come again attached as either an Excel file or a text file. When you open up either one of these files, it's going to look like the report that you pulled from the programming software. It has all of the information of the detectors that are attached, current conditions, peak values, alarm thresholds, how dirty they are, their limit, and whether or not they comply with NFPA 72. In the Excel format, this is a comma separated value file which will open in Excel. Once the file is open in Excel, you can customize it to get it to look exactly how you'd like for a great sensitivity report. To recap, when using a PFC addressable fire alarm control panel, we recommend using the fire alarm panel to test the sensitivity of the smoke detectors connected to that fire alarm control panel. The PFC addressable fire alarm control panel has built-in drift compensation, which allows the panel to compensate for dirt in the detector over time. When the detector becomes too dirty, a dirty detector trouble is reported at the fire alarm control panel. At any point, you can check the detector sensitivity either through the fire alarm control panel keypad, by using the programming software, or through the email capabilities of the addressable fire alarm control panels. Detector sensitivity reports can be printed when using the programming software or the email capabilities. They can be printed into Excel or Word documents. Everything discussed in this video is part of the PFC addressable fire alarm control panels. For more information, please visit our website, www.pottersignal.com.